which I struggle in my previous job and as a CTO in this company also, um, that how your vision flows down three, four level down and everybody understand exactly what we are building, where we are going. And I feel all these big companies, Apple and Microsoft and all, they get successful because their vision is, it goes all the way down. And, and uh, but it is not a simple problem because I struggled myself also, especially now when the teams are remote and people are far away in different time zones, in different culture. What all things you can do to make sure that your vision flows across the board and everybody, you know, marches on the same drummer. Yeah, I would say in my case, two things. Number one is lead by example, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about this. Is like not only talk the talk, walk the walk, and I'm gonna say exactly how I believe a leader should behave there. And the second one is you should establish certain rituals for your group, for your org, where you have you have like certain things that are done on a timely manner and are done again and again to a point where that is where, especially now that we're remote, where a lot of the trust, a lot of the information, a lot of the roadmap, a lot of the vision is not only shared, but is also challenged by the team and iterated in, is opportunity you have to iterate on that. But okay, so when I say, like if someone that leads by example is, the idea of kind of like be the change that you want to be, right? So, for example, if you want folks that are uh, that have different job titles, that have, they are in different orgs, to collaborate more, what do you need to do? You need to show that you need to treat them equally, right? How do you do that? You don't exclude those folks from from your meetings. You do one on ones with them. You kind of like. You ask for their perspective. You don't. You don't treat them as second-level citizens, right? I see a lot of, uh, I would say, a lot of elitism. I would almost say, like, okay, I'm an engineer. You are, let's say, project management. You are product management. Oh, you are quality insurance. Oh, this meeting is only for engineering. Oh, I, I, project managers cannot join this meeting. Mm. Or in, in the sense that kind of like. I'm a developer and the leader is repeating the message that's the wrong message. He's like, oh, my engineer should not spend time testing their, their like the app or they just open the PRs, they do the unit tests and they don't even know how the product works. They believe because all oh, the, the CI CD is great, they don't even understand the business. And I see a lot of leaders that keep doubling down this philosophy, like, okay, engineering only, let's create this bubble. And especially on environment, I, I'm really heavy on cross-functional collaboration. That's why I, I'm kind of hammering down this. As a leader, what you, you should do, if you want that change, is you should start to have one-on-ones with your peers. You should bring them to your meetings. You should kind of like almost someone made a mistake. The worst thing that I have seen is whose blame is it? Oh, the blame is on the product. The blame is on, on QA because they have not done the testing. They, they try to find is the idea of the window of the and the window and the mirror that I said inverted. It's like every time there is a problem, the problem is somewhere else. And usually the reason is because folks are so disconnected. It's like they're operating in bubbles, right? So I would say a great thing that a manager can do is making sure that the information is flowing not only to these direct reports or direct managers, but also to the peers and also to, to, to their boss if needed, right? Mm -hmm. if, if the boss is not communicating across to the boss peers, is your goal to do that and to try to to fill the gaps, right? Mm -hmm. And when it comes to opportunities where you, you have the opportunity to blame someone, you don't do that. Mm -hmm. When it comes to uh, where there is a calibration meeting and you, you have, let's say, all the ICs being discussed, you not only talk about your direct reports, you also sponsor folks that don't report to you, but you see doing a great job, right? It's, it's almost, you, you remove those silos. I think that is, is a big example. Mm. Another example is, if you want your team to start to appreciate one, uh, one another more, be the one starting that. When you see something right, share, send an email to the team and say, mm. thanks for, for doing this. Thanks for staying late. Thanks for, for going above and beyond on that. And recognize the behaviors that you want to see. Mm. Not only the blames that or the problems when it happened. Mm. Whenever something right and whenever the behavior and the intention of doing that was right, even if the result was wrong, 
go and emphasize that. Folks, I know that we, we were not able to deliver the project on time, but we actually did so many amazing things. You collaborate this way, emphasize what went well, right? It's almost like take it easy on, on, on the blame. And if you're going to blame someone, blame yourself first, right? True. So I think that that's the, the, the first part of the, of the answer there. The second part is I'm a huge believer on processes, right? Mm. And I know that there's a lot out there that kind of like, I hate meetings. Meetings are ineffective. Like I'm an engineer. I hate joining standups, like all that kind of thing. But as a, as a leader, I feel that one of the most, uh, I'm saying one of the most valuable things that you can, you can have is really effective meetings where you're not repeating the same message once you're repeating two, three times in four different channels. And you are not only like saying that in like one way, you are also asking for feedback and it's not a monologue, right? It's a dialogue where mm. you're cheating and like you've got to a point where the meaning is not only you, right? And I think the, the meanings where you have someone on a monologue are the, the more, I mean, the worst kind of meanings, right? Because everybody is hearing, but no one is listening, right? It's like, yeah, the, the, the boss is there yeah. saying whatever he wants to say, but no one is engaged. So True. I, I, I'm, I'm a strong believer of like a series of meetings for each one of the cross teams that I, that I like to run. I think I like to have meetings that happen on a weekly basis. So I think like a strong believer that we should be doing a grooming and a demo every week. And that can be at the beginning of the week. So we should actually go and discuss from the roadmap to the, to the next release, what we're doing, bring up product, bring up uh, uh, SRE, bring up all the areas that are going to be involved in that project and have not only reviewing the requirements, but also reviewing the results. Whenever we, we ship something, we go and we look at the dashboard, we look at the metrics. That meeting is where we discuss kind of what we, we're going to build next. And it is the moment where the team has a chance to influence and change direction, right? So right. that's one kind of meeting. The other kind of meeting that I recommend everyone is once every three weeks or once a month, do a retrospective. A retrospective to improve the process, to improve the culture, to improve whatever is not going well, right? The, the focus is not uh, on blaming. The focus is how can we how can we double down the things that are working mm. and how can we, we do experiments or take certain actions to see if that will improve or not the next release or the next couple of weeks, right? And is driven by the team and is, is a chance for the manager to hear feedback of what they can do, what they can ask for, for budget for, like, to, to the, the upper level uh, management, right? The other kind of meeting that I think that is is key is a staff meeting. Right. And so, because as a director or as a senior director, VP, whatever, you might have uh, multiple managers, right? Or multiple directors under you. But a staff meeting is the chance where the whole org gets to hear from you the message, what the direction you want to go, the, the things you messed up, right? And is where that is the social aspect that is missing today, right? Because you no longer go to an office. So it's, it's where everybody see each other and see, oh, that person is actually on the same one. So I can talk to this. Like, and it you know, is also a chance for q and A. Is that is also, and in my view, that needs to be happen weekly. But if you go to a org that is like over 50 or over, over like 35, then you might do monthly. But I still strongly believe that's where you repeat every single email that you send. You repeat every single deadline that's coming. You you kind of emphasize mm. problems that are happening. You kind of like, you almost like you summarize everything that C-level is trying to do, all the problems that engineers and managers are struggling with and what you're going to do about it, right? True. It's like, and you ask for feedback on your ideas, of course, not only there, but is where a lot of information is flowing through the org. And, and that's where I feel that a big mistake is you invite only people that are your direct reports and don't invite folks that are part of each one of the cross-functional teams mm -hmm. that, that are pretty much the composition of the org, right? right. But I know it's is something really controversial. And a lot of people are going to say, oh, if they don't report to me, why do they need to have the my meetings? They're going to hear things that that's where you prove that you're transparent. That's where you kind of like, you gain the credibility, right? True. True, true. No, I, I completely agree with you. If I'll summarize, is uh, you have to communicate very uh, consistently 
across is there any multiple channels multiple channels and set up a cadence of different meeting at different level and keep repeating the information again and again so because you know humans still have a selective hearing thing so uh, to get so them to get your vision maybe they have to hear it a couple of times and one more very important point which you mentioned uh, is have a two way communication yes listen to people's ideas and let them tell you or challenge you around your vision so that is very important i think and and it should not be one way communication yeah very very good points another point there if that is one on ones right i i feel that one on ones are key and is where you should present the most controversial ideas first True. where is like in order for folks to speak up in big meetings that you are leading they like here's a metric that i, I like to see is like if you have enough trust whatever you're presenting things in a meeting folks from your team even if they're two levels down or they're going to speak up they're going to say because they 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 see that transparency they see that trust right they're going to speak up they're going to be engaged they're going to be challenging you but in order to get there you need to do one on ones right true and that's another mistake that i see is that like a lot of like director level senior director levels they just only do one on ones with the direct reports and mm. they, they never do or they do once once a year with all the engineers and i feel that to be effective you need and to build the trust you need not only be communicating through your managers but also hearing directly and building a relationship that kind of like flows across the the, the different levels of reports you have true because i feel that is the chance you have to course correct right if you see that someone is struggling with the direct manager it might not be because the manager is bad or because the person is bad it might be a personality probably might be and you have a chance to see the problem forming right mm. and you have a chance to see okay that person is struggling a lot maybe instead of doing once a month let me do once every two weeks because i need to to understand more I need to connect more mm. maybe there is something that i'm not seeing right. and is your chance to act on a problem before it actually explodes right right and yes it's a lot of work and it's easy to get busy with only project and deadlines and and meetings to to senior leadership all that right True. but you have to put the people pillar first on your calendar and do the, the other three pillars on top of that not the opposite right. my mistake that i see is that a lot of people put projects first and then they try to find time to put one on ones right. and process improvement but that cannot happen you need to have like the foundation of your calendar needs to be people you need to have certain times allocated i would say up to 33% of your calendar should be one on ones should be right. hearing 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 and trying to understand and trying to kind of build the trust that only happens over time exactly exactly it's a very very important point and this is how you will differentiate between a normal manager and a good manager this is the most important point that 101 should not only with your reports but you should go down one level also just to get the feel because what happens is as you go up in the hierarchy uh, there are less and less channels you have for the feedback that's why i started a basically a page curious to know.com just so i can get an anonymous feedback because yes. it become very difficult to get an objective feedback and of course companies have a lot of way to get the feedback but what i do is every time i send a mail there's a signature anybody can click and give me a feedback and i think it's it's very important that's a yeah. powerful tool yeah. like and i feel that if you can do that every 6 months uh, like a non most 360 right with everybody that you work with peers uh folks that are kind of like higher than you in hierarchy and everybody on your org yes totally optional true and ask like basically three questions what i'm doing well what what i'm not doing well and things that i should continue doing or like any other suggestions you have completely anonymous and and whatever you have true. is not going to be and Of course your goal should be to get to a point where you don't need that anonymous part where people are actually putting their names but especially if you're new especially if you have not get to that level yet i think that's going to be amazing you put you're going to get as a manager it's painful it is yeah. it is super painful to get that yeah and there might be folks that are not prepared to give anonymous feedback because they might be they might write things that they would not say one on one or like mm. th- there is the, the downside of the anonymous uh, feedback cool. but there is amazing upside if exactly. you're able to filter down the things that are actionable the things is 
is off the charts what you can get true with it. true so i use this site curious to know.com it's free uh, you can just go and sign up and you know put it under signature i think it's very important to get a, a feedback channel open for a good manager so tiago i have a next question about 